In this video, we're going to list the seven best ETFs for European investors. We're going to include ETFs based on the US, developed markets, emerging markets, different sectors and company sizes. Basically, ETFs for all tastes. My name is Rick, your Italian investor, and in my videos, I always try to give the best European alternative to the American ETFs I talk about. So if you're European, you're welcome to subscribe to the channel, drop a beautiful like and a comment to connect with me and with the community. And when you're done with that, just sit tight, relax, because we're starting now with ETF number seven. Our first ETF is an ETF that covers a really profitable, but also neglected share of the market. I'm talking about the mid cap sector, which in other words means companies that are not too small that they risk easy bankruptcy, but also not too large that there is no more growth potential. Mid cap companies have been proving a better long-term performance than giant large cap companies, even though they are a bit more volatile. In fact, since 1994 to around 2019, mid cap has returned 11.7% more than small cap with 10.78% and large cap with 9.67%. For this reason, in position number seven, I'm gonna give you my favorite mid cap ETF that you can buy from Europe, which is the SPDR S&P 400 US mid cap UCITS ETF. When you look for it in your brokerage app, Search for S&P 400 or mid cap in the search bar, but always double check that the ISIN number of the ETF is the one that ends with 215 to be sure to have found the right one. This ETF has 1.77 billion in assets under management, an expense ratio of 0.3% and a full replication approach. Namely, it fully passively replicates the S&P mid cap 400 index, which is the most important mid cap index in the United States. When it comes to performance, this ETF delivered 16.68% in the last 12 months, as well as 71.47% in the last five, which translates to 11.39% per year. The biggest 10 holdings of the ETF are well distributed in the different sectors. And the good thing is that this is not a huge overweight of the first holdings. In fact, the top 10 holdings weighed a total of 6.67% of the ETF. ETF number six is for the dividend lovers. In fact, this ETF tracks an index called FTSE All World High Dividend Yield Index. In short, it means you're getting a great mix of high dividend yielding companies from all over the world, giving you a really nice 3.07% dividend yield in addition to a return which has been great. The ETF delivered 14.12% only in the last 12 months, 26.98% in the last three years, and 50.46% in the last five, which translates to 8.51% per year. I'm talking about the Vanguard FTSC All World High Dividend Yield USCITS ETF with a TER or total expense ratio of 0.29%. This ETF is the cheapest and largest ETF that tracks the FTSC All World High Dividend Yield Index, with a total of 4.3 billion euros in assets under management. The fund has 1,995 holdings, so it's extremely well diversified, and the top 10 holdings account for 13.25% of the weight. The top names include Broadcom, JP Morgan Chase, ExxonMobil, Procter & Gamble, and Johnson & Johnson. Now, while this is a dividend ETF with global coverage, if you accept investing in just American dividend companies, another great choice is the SPDR S&P US Dividend Aristocrats ETF. Focusing solely on the American stock market, of course, adds the risk of an American economic crisis, but it does give you a better performance in general. In fact, if we compare the SPDR S&P US Dividend Aristocrats ETF with our old world dividend ETF in the last 10 years, the Dividend Aristocrats ETF from SPDR delivered almost double the results with 207% against 125.7% since inception 11 years ago. If you still haven't started investing, or also if you wanna try a new broker, I wanna suggest you the app that I've been using in Europe for many years now, and it's called Trade Republic. I love the fact that it's simple, it includes a huge amount of European ETFs, and it also gives you 3.75% per year on your cash, which is one of the highest safe rates you can get in Europe for cash. The app is easy to use. It allows you to create saving plans with which you can buy ETFs without paying any fee. And you can also buy crypto and derivatives and you can create virtual cards 
to pay in physical stores and online with it. If you want to download it for free, you can just scan this QR code here or you'll find the link in the description below. And downloading it by this link, you'll get a share with a value of at least 10 euros up to 100 euros and you're also gonna get 3.75% on your cash, which is actually great. So download the app and if you want a full guide on how to sign up to the app and start investing, you can watch this video of mine which I made a couple of months back and tells you everything you need to know about European brokers and how to set up your account. All right, for the ETF number five, we're gonna cover emerging markets, an extremely important part of the market that despite volatility, hides the greatest potential for the long term. I'm talking about countries like China or India, both of which have individually a higher population than all developed countries combined. Imagine that over the past 10 years, emerging markets were responsible for 53.3% of the world's nominal GDP growth. The ETF I want to present to you today is the largest ETF on emerging markets with over 18.6 billion euros in assets under management and it's called the iShares Core MSCI Emerging Markets IMI UCITS ETF. The total expense ratio is 0.18% per year and the dividends are accumulated and reinvested in the ETF. The biggest countries included are of course China with 21.41% and India with 18.1%, followed by Taiwan and South Korea. Now, the two emerging countries that I expect to overperform in the future are China and India. I talked about it many times in the past and obviously, based on your interest and future perspective, you can also invest in just these two countries. For India, the best choice is going to be the Franklin FTSE India UCITS ETF, which I personally possess and with a quite cheap expense ratio of 0.19% gave me 35.15% return only in the last 12 months. For China, your best choice is the iShares MSCI China A UCITS ETF. Unfortunately, with a high expense ratio of 0.4%, but honestly, the other common China ETFs, even with 0.3 or 0.28% expense ratio, are gonna give you a lower total return. So this is definitely the best. In position number four, I'm gonna give you one of the largest world ETFs in Europe, which not only includes all developed countries, but also emerging markets. Now, when it comes to world ETFs, there are two indexes of which most ETFs are based and it's really important that you know the difference. You have the MSCI World Index and the FTSE All World Index. The largest world ETF in Europe tracks the MSCI World Index and is the iShares Core MSCI World UCITS ETF USD. And while this ETF is surely a good choice, it doesn't really give you global coverage. In fact, it only covers developed countries like the US, Canada, European countries, Japan, and Australia. The FTSC All World Index instead is my favorite because it truly covers the whole world, including also emerging markets like China and India, which in my opinion represent the countries with the highest potential for the future. The largest and most famous ETF that tracks this global index is the Vanguard FTSC All World EOCITS ETF that with a 0.22% expense ratio and a fund size of over 11 billion euros in asset center management gives you access to the whole world and you can surely sleep well at night because the only way this ETF would go bad in the long term would be if the world collapses, which if you ask me, would pose you a much bigger problem than your portfolio performance. Now, moving to the number three, we have now an ETF focused on the growth sector. Growth companies are companies that generate really high cash flows or earnings compared to the overall economy, and usually distribute less dividends because they focus on reinvesting their earnings on their own growth. The ETF I'm gonna to propose today is the European equivalent of the most famous and bought growth ETF in the United States, which is QQQ, the Invesco QQQ ETF. Now, since as a European, you don't have access to QQQ, luckily you have an equivalent which is 100% identical, and it's called eQQQ the Invesco EQQQ Nasdaq 100 UCITS ETF. With an expense ratio of 0.30%, EQQQ offers you access to the best growth companies of the American stock market like Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, Meta, Alphabet, and it does this giving you a healthy mix of sectors, which of course, has a strong overweight in information technology. QQQ, and therefore also the European equivalent of QQQ, which is eQQQ, has been rated the best performing large capital fund on the market 
based on the returns of the last 15 years. EQQQ delivered 32.74% return only in the last year, 59.24% in the last three, and 181.19% in the last five, which equals to an average annual return of 23 0.03% per year. I know it sounds crazy, but if you only invested in QQQ in the last 20, 10 or 5 years, you would have had a better average annual return than Warren Buffett himself. It doesn't stop there though. If you thought that eQQQ with its average annual return of 23.03% is the greatest ETF ever, it's because you haven't seen what a pure information technology ETF can do. The ETF I'm presenting to you in position 2 has such a great return that if you invest it, 10,000 euros in it just nine years ago. When the ETF was created, you'd now have 61,851 euros. Only in the last 12 months, this ETF delivered 44.77% return, while giving 247.31% in the last five years, which translates to an average yearly return of 28.3%. Bye-bye, Buffett. I can do better than you. The ETF is the iShares S&P 500 Information Technology Sector ETF. And as I said before, if you look for it with your app in Europe, make sure that also the ISIN number matches the one that you see on the screen. The S&P 500 Information Technology ETF is 100% focused on technology. And if I have to be honest, it had this wonderful performance because it's not diversified and has a huge weight of 75.75% on the top 10 holdings, which by coincidence are also the giant tech companies that dragged the whole American stock market to the moon in the last years. So how should I put it? This ETF has basically been just like a great stock picker. It's not really diversified. It has only 66 holdings. So I can only tell you, don't forget what happened in the year 2000. Everybody was happy. The technology sector was giving unbelievable results for years. And that's where you see your portfolio doing plus 300% in a year and you think you're invincible. Well, you're not. And so is the technology sector. I don't want to spread panic, guys. I love the technology sector probably more than you, but please maintain a stable balance of all the sectors and you're going to achieve great results in the long term. And that's why for the next ETF, the number one, I'm going to choose the one that if you know me or great investors like Warren Buffett, you know it's probably the best index fund ever created. I'm talking about the S&P 500 index, which tracks the 500 best and largest companies of the American stock market and has proven to be the greatest ETF for long-term investors. The S&P 500 index offers the best and most optimized diversification of the entire stock market by picking the best companies from each sector for a total of 500 companies. Stocks are selected by the index provider Standard & Poor's, based on profitability, market capitalization, sector allocation, liquidity, and many other important factors. While single sectors like information technology may go extremely well like it happened in the last 15 years, but also extremely bad like it happened between 2000 and 2010, if you buy the whole American stock market through the S&P 500, you're protecting yourself from almost any risk because you're perfectly diversified within the US. My favorite S&P 500 ETF from Europe are the Invesco S&P 500 UCITS ETF, which is the one that gave the greatest long-term return because it's a synthetic ETF, and the Vanguard S&P 500 UCITS ETF, which instead uses a full replication approach. So if you buy it, you're actually owning the companies inside it. Now, I'm mentioning these two S&P 500 ETFs because I believe they are better than the largest S&P 500 ETF in Europe, which is the iShares Core S&P 500 ETF. Just to give you an idea why I believe this, with this table, I'm comparing the performance of the two ETFs that I mentioned, the Invesco and the Vanguard, with the iShares one. The highest performance always belongs to the Invesco because it's a synthetic ETF. But the second best one is the Vanguard ETF. To reassure you, all three ETFs have billions of euros in asset under management, so I wouldn't have any second thought on buying whatever I prefer of the three. In my personal portfolio, just to be transparent, in case you wonder, I have the Vanguard and the Invesco ETFs. For an introduction on how to invest in ETFs from Europe, you should definitely check out this video of mine from last week 
If you instead want to learn about the different brokers in Europe and how to choose the best one, you can check out this other video of mine. I hope you enjoyed this video. If I could be of any help, drop a beautiful like and subscribe to the channel because every week you'll get new investing videos from the Italian dream of Mano Ginobili, which is not that bad. For now, I wish you a great day, guys, or evening. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.